Good morning. Welcome to our monthly Penny webinar. This month's topic is going to be backloading. For those of you joining us for the first time, uh, there are a good number of people on the webinar, so what we do is uh, everyone is on mute. I ask that if you have questions during the webinar or afterwards, uh, email us at crc at pennyatworks.com. At the end of the webinar, I'm going to take a look and see what questions have come in. If I don't get to your question uh, during the webinar, I will reach out to you later this afternoon. So today's topic is backloading. And in Penny, there are two different types of periods. They, there are live periods and backload periods. The difference is live periods are uh, where calculations occur. So a live period, you're going to do a management fee calculation, your incentive fee calculation, your allocations. A backload period, that is um, stagnant da data. There are no calculations. What you put in the system is what it's going to take in. Um, so with the backload, the first thing you need to do is come up with a point in time. At what point are you going to start going live and what do you need to backload? The actual backloading is quick. Um, it's a series of imports. Um, so importing it um, is, doesn't take long at all. But what you do need to make sure is that everything's set up in the system first. So that includes your uh, chart of accounts, so your accounts, uh, your sub-accounts, um, investors, your fund, uh, fund investor roles, your investor roles, your fees. Everything needs to be set up because when you populate your templates, uh, the information needs to be in Penny. If not, you're going to get an error message when you import. Uh, for example, if you don't have account 1000 set up, but it's part of your trial balance, Penny is going to beep at you and say, this account does not exist in the system. Please set it up. Uh, one of the things you need to do first when you talk about backloading, and I'm going to bring you over to the admin tab, there's a section called fund backload. So a lot of what we do is in this backload tab. You have to set up your backload periods. Now when you set up your backload periods, you need at least two. I'll take a look at this one. Uh, the start of time in Penny is considered 1-1-1970. That's the beginning, uh, and that's always going to default. So you need two periods. You need one period right next to your live period. So for this example, I'm going to go live on 1-1-2014. So I'm going to have a backload period for December and then another backload period from 1970 right up to that uh, day before. So from 1970 through 1130, and then a backload period 12-1 to 12-31, and then I'm going to start live on 1-1. One, one. Note that you do, when you add in your um, backload periods, there is a difference in type between interim and year-end. So in this case, 12-31 is my year-end, so I'm going to uh, tag it as a year-end. That just tells the system, um, especially on the general ledger side, to roll up the trial balance and uh, treat it as a year-end. So there are two sides that we need to bring in for backloading. There's the general ledger and the capital. So we're going to start with the general ledger side. And this may be familiar to you because uh, what you'll need to do is import a trial balance. And the way you do it is the same as you would in a live period. So you have your trial balance import. I'm just going to bring up an example of one I've imported. And on my import, I populate the date, the company, account, subaccount, and amount. So this is your standard trial balance import. Now, bringing this into the system, into a backload period, the system is then going to use these balances as the basis for going forward. Now, if you make a mistake, let's say you bring in a trial balance and you realize, oh, I, I want to change something, I want to redo that. And you're just going to, similar to a live period, you're going to go to trial balances uploaded, you're going to hit it and press delete, and then you can re-import a new one. Now, in the case for this example, I'm bringing in a trial balance for year-end. Now, the trial balance for year-end, you can bring it in two ways. You can bring it in, since it is year-end, you can bring it in rolled up with the P&L rolled up into capital. Um, I normally recommend that you, you do bring it in with the P&L broken out. Uh, as you set your backload period to be a year-end, the system will roll that up automatically. So just to take a look, I'm going to 
let's bring in um, the this is the trial balance I brought in. I'm going to do pre-close, excluding the closing entry, to show all the numbers that I brought in, which will show the P&L. So I have my income and expense accounts. And then I'm going to, since, again, the backload period was tagged as year-end, it will do that closing entry and roll up the P&L. Now, because this is a backload period, it doesn't know who to allocate that P&L to. So it's going to allocate to the default sub-account that you have on your fund setup. So in this case, I have it as miscellaneous. So I have my investors, very creative here, A, B, C, D. And you'll see that the p and is just rolled up to the default sub-account. Now you can do a journal entry to reallocate that by investor either to match to your spreadsheets. But just note that it does use the default account for rolling up because it doesn't have the allocations in the system as it's a backload period. Now, to go to the other side would be the capital side. So we're going to go back to this fund backload tab, and we're going to start by talking about partnerships. Partnerships, it's one import that you have to bring in. It's called the partner capital. Now, you all know I love the help file, so I'm going to hit F1 and show you that the help file for all of these imports, if you hit F1, it's going to give you information on all the fields on the import going to tell you what the required fields are, what the optional fields are, um, and give you uh, information on that. So for example, partners capital import, you need the fund code, the investor code, um, and again, this is why this all needs to be set up prior to uh, importing your backload information. So to give you an example of one that I brought in, You define your fund, your investors, the investor role they're in, the end date for the period, and then the activity. So prior balance, contributions, assignments, P&L, fees, ending balance. Now, I do say that, you know, the backload periods uh, don't calculate anything, but there are some validity checks, and one of those is it does need to foot across. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you'll need to make sure that um, the amounts going across that the prior balance plus any changes equals your ending balance. Now by bringing in that import, you're populating the capital side. So that was for partnerships. For share-based funds, there's a little bit more to it. Instead of just bringing in your capital number, you're going to bring in your, your GAV and your share amounts. So there's actually three steps, three imports that you'll need to do. The first one is your share series. What this tells the system is it sets up what your uh, share series are in the system. So example, your role, your series number, and the fund it's tagged to. And I should mention these imports uh, for the backload are similar to all the other imports in the system. All the templates are saved within the import. So if you just come to import share series and hit template, you can save out the template for these imports. So once you bring in the share series, you're going to bring in the GAV. And just to show you an example of what the template looks like. Here you're going to define your fund, your date, your role, your series, and then what the GAV is. Your open, any changes, and your ending. And again, this does need to foot across. Then the final piece, on your shareholder capital is uh, the, the shares. So through this import, again to show you an example, this is similar to the partner capital import but share based. So you're going to have your opening balance in number of shares, any activity, and your ending balance. And again this needs to foot across. So by giving the system the number of shares and the GAV, it's going to then calculate your capital balances. Now a lot of times when you're doing a backload, you might populate something into the system and then say, oh, you know, I want to change it, I need to make an adjustment. Um, if you go into the import and just hit clear, 
All that does is delete it from the import. It doesn't delete the underlying data. So what you need to do is, if you go back to backload period, and you select the period, there's a section here, clear activity. And this will clear your partner activity and your shareholder activity, depending on which imports you use. So I always recommend, if you need to bring in your capital side, uh, your, your templates again, just make sure to go here and clear your activity first. Now you'll know if you don't because uh, if you go to run your reports, let's say you bring in your import more than once and you don't clear it out, when you run your capital report, you're gonna see double the numbers. So that's a check to do. So always make sure if you're uh, redoing anything that you clear your activity. Um, another couple items to note, uh, when you're dealing with these templates, rounding sucks. There's really no other way around it. Um, so I highly recommend when you're creating your templates that you just make sure your numbers are rounded to two decimal places. Um, a lot of times these, these numbers come from an Excel template or calculations that you have, and if they go out six, eight decimal places, that you just round it to two decimal places. It just uh, prevents um, rounding differences. I also recommend that you get all of your templates ready first and then import um, all at once. And one of the reasons I say that is, you know, the general ledger side and the capital side, in a backload period, there's, they don't talk to each other. So one of the checks I recommend doing is that you check the capital amount on your trial balance and what you're bringing in and the capital amount on your um, capital reports and what you're bringing in and just make sure they tie out. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about performance and backloading performance. Performance, there's two ways, uh, to, two levels, I should say, of backloading. One is the fund level and one is the investor level. So you can do both fund level performance and investor level. For the, um, the backload, we have in the backload section, fund performance backload and performance backload. Now this feature uh, allows you to set the performance as of a point in time. So this is used for year-to-date numbers, inception-to-date numbers. And I'm gonna talk in a little bit about just the regular performance override, which is by uh, period. But this is the point in time. So to give you an example, <coughs> excuse me, when you talk about these, uh, the backload for performance, here's your investors. This is the one by investor. And you can see here, gross year to date, inception to date. You also have net and uh, net inception as well. So when you populate these numbers, the system is just taking that number and using it as a base to go forward. So whatever uh, you put here as your inception to date, it's just gonna compound this, this number with what occurs in your uh, next period. Now, Penny does have the ability to do rolling performance numbers. And by nature, the rolling numbers, you need all the, the components. You can't just put in a year-to-date number. You actually have to put the individual 12 months so that I can do the rolling calculation. So for this, we're gonna go back into our regular fund performance. And we're gonna use the performance override. Now, this is the same feature you would use in live periods. And what this override does is a point in time just for the specific period. Uh, when you're backloading, you'll need to use the import just because uh, your capital, uh, if you're backloading, you know, back uh, a year ago and you, and you haven't um, imported that capital, uh, if you just hit add, it's not going to be an option. But if you use the import, you can populate by investor or by fund um, all the period-to-date performance numbers um, going back as far as you would like. And by giving the system all the components, it, it allows it to do the rolling calculations. Once you have these performance overrides in, you'll need to run the period performance, and then that will set you up um, uh, with everything in so that you can move forward. Now I'm gonna take um, a little bit of a different direction here and talk a little bit about private equity. Because on the private equity side, the performance calculation is the IRR. And since the IRR needs the historical cash flows, for private equity, you're going to actually need to book into the system 
all the historical cash flows, the commitments, the calls, the distributions. Starting in version 10.2, we're also adding the ability to do assignments as well. So when uh, you have two ways to backload the private equity transactions, you can either go in and manually enter them, so you can manually enter your commitments calls, or you can use the import. So depending on the quantity, uh, the quantity, um, whichever way you want to do it is up to you. Once you have all of your historical information in, and I should note, when you bring in these historical um, transactions into a backload period, the system recognizes it as a backload period, and your transactions do not affect the ledger. Because you don't want to double count. You've already brought in your general ledger on your trial balance, and you've already brought in your partner's capital. So you don't want to double count by adding in additional calls and distributions. So this is just for IR calculations only. So when you book these transactions into a backload period, they do not affect the ledger. So once you have your historical transactions in, you're going to go back to fund backload, and you're going to run the PE performance backload. And what this does is it takes in all of those historical transactions and calculates the IRR. So that is how you backload a fund. And by backloading, what you're really doing is giving Penny a foundation on which to move forward. Um, because of this, just note that once you go live and you close your first live period, you, uh, you cannot alter the backload period next to that live period. So you can't, you can't take away the foundation that you're using to go forward. So at this time, I'm just going to take a look at the questions that have come in. So just give me one second. Okay. So this question relates to the uh, backload periods. So I mentioned earlier the need for two backload periods, and the question is, if, if you're planning on backloading multiple periods, when should you create those backload periods? If you know off the bat that you're going to be backloading, let's say, an entire year, so in this example you're going to be backloading 2013. You can absolutely, when you first set up your backload periods, um, you can do this either manually or through an import, bring in uh, all the periods for 2013. So you can actually create uh, 13 periods, 12 for the year, and then the one 1970 through 1231, 2012. Um, but let's say you uh, just decide at a later date, you, you know, you, you backload from December, and then you realize, you know, it would be actually nice to backload this year just because you um, only have two periods doesn't prohibit you from doing that. Well, I did mention you can't alter this period next to the live period because that's the foundation Penny's using. The reason I had you set up two periods in the beginning is because you can always, it's called insert within. So if you take this period and insert within, you pick your fund, the start date, and you can change the date. So I'm going to go and add a period through 1031. So now I've created a separate month in my backload. And to populate this month, it's the same as we just discussed. You would bring in a trial balance, and you would bring in the capital reports. And let's say then you wanted to add in another month, you can insert within. So just because you've only set up two periods, you actually still have the ability to go back and add in uh, additional backload periods if you choose to backload um, at a later date. So that wraps up our webinar for this month. Uh, thank you for joining us. Again, if you have any more questions, um, feel free to reach out. Um, uh, if um, Our next webinar is going to be Thursday, October 23rd on incentive fees. So if you haven't RSVP'd yet, please do so. And again, any questions on this webinar, uh, just reach out to crc at pennyatworks.com. We also record these, and they're available on our extranet, um, as well as on YouTube and Vimeo. So thank you very much, and see you next month.